welcome guys welcome back to my live welcome to dinners from around the world with me chef walker barrett welcome welcome to those of you who are watching on instagram and also on facebook so today's dinner i'm very excited to share this one with you today's dinner is all about some Mediterranean flavors, meat Jamaican flavors. So we are going to be grilling a fish and then we're going to be putting some Mediterranean flavors on it like herbs, like dried herbs like basil, uh, oregano, dried marjoram, dried rosemary. We are going to be making some sweet potato dumplings in the Mediterranean, they refer to this as gnocchi. And so we are going to start with our dumplings first because it needs some time to relax before we can boil it. So again, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome back to dinners from around the world. With me, Chef Walker Barrett from my kitchen. This is where I share with you how I make food for my family and my inspiration can be from any one of my travels or just from any uh, other food culture so let me know where you're watching from guys and so I will give you a shout out also welcome again to those who are on Facebook welcome on Instagram and of course welcome to all our next in food youtubers welcome welcome so Let's get into it. In this container, this container, this is where we're going to be making our sweet potato dumpling, AKA no keys. So I have some grated sweet potatoes in here and an egg. And so I'm just gonna mix it all together. So this is freshly grated sweet potatoes. To this, I am going to add some salt to taste and this is kosher salt so the salt to taste and then i'm just going to be adding some flour just enough flour to mix it into a dough are you a dumpling lover so in this house we are we love dumplings and we add almost everything to it so tonight we're adding sweet potatoes now this dumpling is inspired by the italian gnocchi gnocchi you know some people say it's a pasta some people say it's a dumpling what do you call it comment down below and let me know have you ever had gnocchi in jamaica we just say dumplings and so the dumpling dough is coming on nicely, so I'm just going to put aside my spoon. Trini says, good evening, Chef and Tom and all the viewers. Good evening. Sharon, Sherry White. White, good evening, Chef. It's been a while. I've been missing your show. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Sharon. Welcome. So we're making dumplings, a.k.a. gnocchi. This is what it looks like. This is freshly grated sweet potato. Traditionally for gnocchis, you would have boiled the potatoes um, and then add the egg and the flour. But tonight, I'm just using the raw sweet potato. Trini says never had gnocchi. Okay, Trini, you're not really missing out. Um, it's what we would call dumpling but um, lighter. What does that mean? Egg is added to it. So you can add an old egg or the egg yolk only. And um, you can add ricotta cheese to make it light and airy. And then it is made up into a dough, just like what I'm doing here. After it is made up into a dough, we usually allow it to rest and then shape it, boil it, and then saute it with butter and then you can just finish it with some herbs or whatever you like so i'm calling it dumplings tonight Ms. and this is with sweet potatoes Ms. Pretty Costa says hi to my friends i'm watching the live 
Hi, Miss Pretty Plus Tax. Welcome. Where are they get away? So, what are we making? We are making, right now, I'm making a dumpling dough. This is sweet potato dumpling. This is made from freshly grated sweet potato, egg, and butter. And this dumpling is inspired from the Italian, is inspired by the Italian gnocchi, which is a dumpling. Trinine says, I prefer to have been dumplings of the two. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that is debatable. So, I mean, no two Caribbean dumplings are the same. I don't like the ones that are really chewy. Um, in Jamaica, we say tight. I don't like tight dumplings. I like a nice bite, but not too tight. Okay, so this is our gnocchi dough. It is ready. And so I'm going to put it off to the side and let it relax. And then I'm gonna come back and show you guys how to shape it. So let's Patricia. put this off to the side. Patricia Brown says good evening, family. Hey, sis. Kelisha Walker, how am I going to do this time, family? Hey, Ken. All right, guys, so I'm just giving my hand a little wash. So, moving right along, I am going to be making our dessert. And dessert today is plantain tart. Now, I am going crazy for plantains. Plantains are now in season. I mean, it looked like the season just extra enough. You know, you can get plantain all year round, but sometimes it's a little bit short. Plantains are all over the market and the prices are a lot better because there's so much. So I thought I could show you again how to make plantain tart. For a full tutorial on plantain tart, you can visit my YouTube channel. It's called Next in Food. If you have not heard about it, I'm pleased to introduce you to my YouTube channel, Next in Food. For those of you who are watching us on Instagram at Street Food Saturdays, you could just click the link in the bio and it takes you directly to our YouTube channel. Hit the subscription button and subscribe. You will see a full tutorial on how to make plantain tart. So, Keisha Walker says what about <laughs> plantain tart? So I'm going to be showing you a short version tonight. So this is plantain. This is ripe plantain that is cooked and mashed. I added red coloring to give it this rosy red. I added some extra sugar for extra sweetness. I added um, vanilla and nutmeg, so that's all that is. This is ripe mashed plantain. Now, this is the dough for our plantain tart. This is a short crust pastry. I have two short crust pastry tutorial on my YouTube channel. One when I'm making a smoked salmon aki quiche and one when we made plantain tart. So you can check out how to make short crust pastry on the YouTube channel. So, I'm just going to dust my board with some flour. And this is called benching, or um, you know, just the surface that we're rolling on is referred to as the bench in the bake shop. So, Bird Knight says, what's about calling me on, on my extension tomorrow and saying, hey, Omar, come <laughs> Hey, Bird Knight, no problem. Okay, so this is our short crust pastry. This was made using half fat to flour. What does that mean? That means I use one pound of all-purpose flour and to the one pound of all-purpose flour, I use half pound of cold butter and some salt to taste. And of course, some, um, some, what do we call it now? Some um, water to hold everything together. So that's what a short crust pastry is. It's made with 100% flour and 50% fat. And so for short, 
we say have fat to flour. So again, for those who are watching us for the first time, welcome, welcome to those on Facebook and welcome to those on Instagram. So when you're working with flour, guys, it can be a little messy, but it's worth it. So I rolled out the apron and put on the apron. So I'm rolling this out in about, I don't know, about one eighth of an inch thickness. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use my cutter to cut them in circles, just like this. So this is our first planting tart. This is what it looks like. This is the first one. And this is about a four inch circle. I'm just gonna keep cutting. So you cut and remove, and we set up a nice little production line. All right, since I have to make planting tart for bird night, I have to make a little extra. All right, that one not behaving so well. Okay, so that is three. I want to get about eight. And this is four. And then we're going to squeeze it together and roll again. All right, so let's put a little flour on our bench and make a little production line just like this. So we need a pastry brush, all right, and some water. We get a cup. So water seals pastry together. So we're gonna take a pastry brush and we're just gonna go around the circle with some water. The purpose of the water is to seal the pastry together when we add the filling. To so each dough, I'm going to add a nice spoonful of mashed ripe plantain. Is there anybody on here who have never ever had plantain tart? Plantain tart is a Jamaican thing. It's a Jamaican um, pastry. And I love to make it whenever I can. I absolutely love it. So I have my little pan here. So first one goes in, and then I'm just gonna keep making them. Second one. I love making my pastry with butter. Butter just makes it taste so much better. And I like to fill the pastry all the way up with lots and lots of planting fill in because I like planting in every bite. I think this is my favorite way to have ripe planting, you know, just to use it to make a planting tart. Okay, so we're just going to try and re-roll this part just to get about two more. Let's see. But first, let me turn my oven. Don't come fast says what did you do? Oh no, I did not grease the pan. I just put some aluminum foil on the pan. It's not grease. Just for easy cleanup, I put foil on it. Yeah, yeah. It says what's about using a fork to, for the, to shape the edges. Oh yes, you definitely can. But I don't usually do, so that's why I left I left it like that. Sure, I'm sure it's white. The worst part of the taste for planting tarts. Oh, uh, I, I, I suppose you've had a very bad one. Mm, uh, Sharon. Sharon? Uh, it's just planting and a good pastry. It works. But I understand, you know, some things, no matter how good they are, you just, you know, you just don't like them. Bro, says, hello, my favorite pastry. <laughs> Hello. So we're trying to get two more. So that's one. Let me show you a little thing that I do. So I'm just going to cut this one. Sure, I'm sure. I was more interested in your feet. 
cake pastry. Oh. So each pastry has its place. I, I, I don't like the flaky pastry for the plantain tart. I like the mealy um, taste of a short crust pastry for it. I don't even like it with puff pastry. But um, I'll try and do a tutorial one day on how to make flaky pastry because my daughter has been asking me forever to do a patty tutorial and it is long overdue so let's see what happens so again water around the circle and planting filling goes in just like that and put the extra one out the way Try and fit them all on one tray. Okay, guys, so now it's time for us to get these in the oven. So, at this stage, we are going to egg wash the top of our plantain. And egg wash is just beaten egg mixed with a little milk or water. The sure. purpose of the egg wash is to allow the sugar that I'm going to add on top to stick. Sharon, Sharon's right. Yours looking like it's worse, Sharon. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Keisha says puff pastry and planting tart is fun, right? Yes, Keisha, I agree. I, I just don't, it just don't work for me. Give me my short crust pastry made with butter or butter and margarine for my planting tart. So, so now guys, I am going to get a fork. And we are going to decor planting tart. And this part is to allow the steam to escape during the baking process. So I just deck it with a regular fork. Take some white sugar and just shower down some sugar on the outside. I love the crunch of the sugar. You know, in high school, in homey class, Plastic tart was the first thing I learned to make. Big up yourself, Mrs. Bailey. Mrs. Bailey was my homely teacher. She was such a good teacher. Okay, so I fell in love with planting tart then and I always make it whenever I can. So take a look at the planting tart. We're going to put it in the oven. Take a look. So next time you see it, it's going to be baked and crispy and delicious. Okay, so we're going to bake this at... You always want to bake pastry at about 375 and we're going to bake this for about 20 minutes. So let's see what happens. So now it's time to clean up. Ashido, do you see the bench scraper? Let's clean away some of these things guys that we're not using. my bin spray pot, so I'm going to just use my knife, clean away without damaging my um, countertop. So guys, let me know where you're watching from while I try to clean away all of this extra flour. There we go. And grab a towel. And just clean up. It's very important to clean as you go along. Guys, clean as you go. It makes everything so much easier. Look at this little gadget. This is called a Noki board. This is what gives the Noki its groove. So I'm going to show you how to make the Italian dumplings Noki, even though I'm just calling them dumplings tonight. So I told my son I was making dumplings and then he got very excited because he loves dumpling. 
And then I said, where's the gnocchi board? I'm like, oh, mommy, I thought she was just going to make the regular Jamaican dumplings. So, I don't know. Let's see. Wait, can you grab the plastic wrap? So planting part is in, guys. And now I'm going to show you some other stuff. So our protein tonight is fish. Thank you. And we have two types of fish. We have a pargi. Have you ever heard of that fish? It's called a pargi. This is what it looks like. I butterfly them all, so that's why they're falling apart. And this is a yellow tail snapple. Okay, so that's our fish. So, Lady Dana says, Hello, watching from Florida. Love me some planting tarts. Hey, Dana, welcome. Okay, so. While we wait, I'm going to season our fish and put it aside. So for our fish, I have a tray and I have some nice fresh fish. And I have some other good stuff. I have a relish that I made with capers. Remember tonight, this dinner is inspired by Mediterranean cooking. So when I think about Mediterranean flavors, I think of capers, I think of olive oil, I think of lemon juice, I think of tomatoes, uh, onions, saffron, herbs, uh, like oregano and basil and chives and so on. Those are what I think about tomatoes. Did I say tomatoes already? Or bell peppers. Those are what I think about. So. Let us clean our fish up. Clean up just a little bit more. So this is what I did to the fish. I just kind of butterfly it out so I can get more flavor in there. So what I did is just kind of partially fillet it. This is what it looks like. Okay, so that's one. And then this is a snapple. You guys are all familiar with the yellowtail snapple. Are you? So I'm just going to cut. This is 85, so tell us your family. Hope all is well. Hello, impressive 85. All is well with us. We hope all is well with you. So, when you're choosing a fresh fish, you want to make sure that the skin is firm. My skin is nice and firm. The eyes are like a mirror. They're nice and glossy. It has no full odor. It smells nice and fresh. So this fish is nice and fresh. And that's how I like it. So now we are going to add some salt directly onto our fish. Let's make sure everything is seasoned. Then in this container, I have a bag of spices. Let you get something bigger. I love spice guys, so this is my Mediterranean spice mix. Let me tell you what's in it. Garlic powder, marjoram, dried basil, oregano. What else is in there? I'm sure I'm missing out some stuff, but that's the basic ingredient, so just gonna put some directly on the inside of the fish just like that then I want to close it back up and get some salt on the outside because I want the skin to be nice and crisp and the salt will allow that to happen just like this Let's rub some salt on the outside. We want to make sure that our fish is nicely seasoned. And this is going to go into the oven. But before that, let us put some butter on the skin of the fish. So I have some softened butter. I'm just going to rub it on the outside of the fish. 
So the butter is going to add some flavor and it's going to prevent our fish skin from sticking to the foil. All right, so you just get the butter in there, just like that. Impressive 85, says chef, it's so hard to get fresh fish in Virginia. <laughs> oh, I've never been to Virginia. Really? No market is, it, is there where you can go and get the, the, the fish on the ice, not the frozen one. Those are always nice and fresh. Okay, so our fish is nicely buttered and I'm trying to make both of them whole in this pan. Let's see. Good night, my chef. Good night. Okay, so both of them will not hold in the pan. So sad. So we're just gonna keep one in the pan. We have a little relish here. This is made with capers, bell peppers, hot peppers. And look at that, guys. So I'll do one in the pan and one in the oven for you to see. So take a look. So this is our pargy. Is it pargy? That's what the fish lady said, name pargy. It kind of looks like a grunt, but it has a nice white flesh, as you can see, and it's very fleshy. So this is gonna go inside our oven, and we're gonna let it cook. And remember, fish does not take long to cook, so do not overcook your fish. All right, so now we are going to go back to our gnocchi, aka dumplings. Impressive 85 cents. I am closer to DC area. They have them on the ice at the Asian and Hispanic market, but it's hard to get the fresh ones. The skin is never firm on the ice already. Oh, gosh, gosh. Well, those are as close as fresh as fresh will get. So try and skin through and see. Sometimes the eyes can be a little bit red, but it should be glossy depending on the type of fish. So if it's like a red snapper, I find that the eyes can be mimicking the color sometimes. I know it's hard to get fresh fish, but even here in Jamaica, Jamaicans, we get more frozen fish than fresh fish, even though we're surrounded by the Caribbean Sea. It's very difficult because the ocean is so overfished and you know, the fishermen, they go out, they stay out for days and they come back in. And sometimes when they, got back, they get back to land, the fish is not even really fresh because they've been out there for five days. So we don't even know what we're getting. Okay, so this is our dumplings. All right, so I wanna just roll it, roll it into a log. Just roll it like so. So that's one log. And then just gonna do two more. Just keep dusting the board with flour because I don't want it to stick too much. How do you make dumplings? I make dumplings depending on my mood. I make them long like I like so and cut them or I make them round. Doesn't really matter. Alright, so I'm gonna pause, get some water going, put the water on because you want to as soon as you make these, you want to have your water boiling. So I'm gonna put some water on to to boil our dumplings. Get my water going. 
most important thing is to try and roll them as even as possible. And then I'm cutting them. Cut mine big like this. So these are the first set. And then we're going to boil them off. This is our starch tonight. This one is kind of crooked, but hey, it's not about perfection. Okay, my water is going to go on in the meantime. My water is on. So by the time I'm done rolling the dumplings, the water will be nice and ready and we can just boil the dumplings. I really want to cook the fish absolutely last because the fish is literally going to take 12 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes to cook. Fish does not take long to cook. So these are our dumpling, nice and rustic and cut. I'm gonna cut some more. Are you a dumpling lover? We love dumpling in this house. I'm gonna show you in a little bit the purpose of the board. The Noki board is just to give the dumplings a little groove. Don't so when we use the Noki board. I just said um, I'm going to show you. You usually use it after you cut them. After you cut the dumplings, you roll them on the board just to get the groove. So first you roll them into a log, just like this. And by the way, you can also make them round. So I cut for good measure. And then, so for the person who asks a question, this is our Noki board. Uh, there are two ways. You can just round the dumplings into a log, and then you press it onto the board and roll it over again, and you get the groove. See that? It gives you that little groove in. So can I have, Wayne, can I have that um, platter behind you, that brown one? Thank you. Have you guys seen the groove? Let can me know if she, yeah, if, um, you get it. Takes me back to the days when mother was in a lot of dumplings. She would always roll and cut. Oh uh, yes, yes, Kenisha is like, you're, you're in my head, my sister. So, my mom used to work in a canteen when we were small and then what she would do is roll the dumplings out and cut them like this but way bigger way bigger and just scoop them off and throw them in the pot that's what my mother would do so i prefer to round so after I cut them, I round them into a ball, just like so. And if they're sticking, you just give them a little bit of love. And then we just pass them on the board to give them the groove. And the groove just helps to hold the sauce onto the bubble says hello. The Noki, a little lovable. Okay, so we're just gonna press and roll, roll. You just kind of roll them back and forth on it. Press, roll, and you can just roll it back and forth. So press on the board, roll over, and if it starts to stick, you put a little flower on it. Just like that, press and roll. And all we're doing is picking up the groove from the board just to give it a nice little bit of shape. 
Janet Bedford. Happy Sunday, Chef Mark and family. Hey, Janet. How are you? Happy Sunday to you, too. We're making dumplings, aka milky, sweet potato to be exact. This is freshly grated sweet potatoes. And um, I like the taste of it that way. Traditionally for the nokis, the potato would have been boiled and mashed, but I left my potato raw, added an egg, added some flour, added just a little bit of salt and butter for flavor. And I made a dough and now I roll them into a log, cut them, and now I'm just shaping them onto my little gadget that is called a no keyboard. And we're sticking with the theme of it being on the long side. So I flat it out like so. Janet and then, I am blessed. Good. So once it starts to stick, we put some flour on our board and we just roll all right all right i'm just gonna put these off to the side for ashila to finish rolling these and then i'm going to start making another dish and check on our planting tart Ashley. So off camera, Ashila is going to be rolling the rest and shaping them to get another board to put them on while I take the time to do something else. I want to finish, finish well. So guys, we just clean this up. So I'm just going to let these hang out and air dry a bit and then we're going to Boil them and then finish them with some butter. Pat Paris, hello sis. Hey Pat. Hello. So you can just put them up here. Patch. Time to clean up. Time to bring out the stove. water get it nice and getting up to boiling temperature for our gnocchi i'm just gonna salt my water real good where's my salt just add some salt in here just like that and in a few more minutes, this water is going to come up to boiling point, and we are going to add our gnocchis. And look at this, she is making them. Isn't that beautiful? Look how beautiful she's making them. So, we're going to boil that in a bit. I really should have taken out the other stove so I could just finish. Boil food in Jamaica? Fantastic hot emojis. <laughs> Okay guys, so on this stove over here, I'm going to start getting my pot hot. We're going to cook some the fish into the pot and one into the oven, but we're doing the gnocchi first. Very important, 
Um, we don't like our fish overcooked, so we like to just cook it and eat it right away. So I want to do all the sides and sauces first, and that's what we're doing. And then we will cook our fish. We check on our dessert. Dessert is almost ready. I'll show you what the dessert is looking like in a minute. Planty tarts are baking nicely. So it's waiting time. We are just waiting on our water to come up to temperature and we are waiting to put our nokis, our dumplings in. And these are like, so as I said before, the Italians call them do, um, gnocchi and um, it's very, very, very similar to our dumpling. The only difference is that they take the time to shape them a little differently. They add egg and usually it is made with potatoes and other stuff, maybe a little flour. And in Jamaica, we just make dumpling with cornmeal or plain flour. But my mother never, ever, ever make plain dumplings. She always put something in there. She put pumpkin, she put carrot, she put coconut, she put breadfruit, she put help me here my sisters that are watching what was one of the weirdest thing that mommy put in dumpling she put banana and guess what every time she makes dumpling and put those things in there it comes out absolutely delicious my mother was a superstar cook so all our dumplings are going in the water and we are going to let them boil. Look at that. Can you see the, these machines through the camera? I can see they're going into the pot. Okay. So, dumplings. Hey sis, I was just talking about mommy and the many varieties of dumplings that she makes. Uh, this one is sweet potato. This is inspired by the Italian gnocchi. But so I was just saying that mommy would make, she doesn't make plain flour dumplings. Something have to be in it to make it even more delicious. So I was up to banana. So if you can remember something else that I am forgetting. She would grate banana and put in there, carrot, whatever. All right, so I want to get my spoons ready. Because once these dumplings are all going, I need a gas. Okay, there, I'll just give it. This is always happening to me, guys. I'm always running out of gas. That means so true. So, run out of gas. We're just going to change the gas and then start the cooking again. Yes, ma'am. My mother just put whatever she can find in the flour and she makes delicious dumplings for us thank you my dear so our guests were about and our cooking pause but we are back in this news and we're cooking again use the dull part of it so all of our sweet potato dumplings are in and that's going to cook for about five to seven minutes. So while that is cooking, I just want to get all the other stuff that I'm going to need ready. Get my serving plate ready for my 
dumplings. I have some um, pesto that I'm going to be putting on to the dumplings. Don't forget it. You can also add cheese to these dumplings like if you really want to make them very very Italian but the no is just an inspiration so I'm just cooking it more Jamaican style nothing too fussy because the fish is the star of the show tonight so we're back in business all right, so while we wait on our dumplings, we want to get our serving ready for our planting tart. May I have that mat? Um, can I have a silver mat, Ophelia? Want to just get stuff ready. Give us like two silver mats running across here. Okay, I'll take the other one as well. So we want to set up for service. I'll just use this one here. So that once the food is ready, we can present it. There we go. Okay, so what else do we need? plate for green beans so we have a plate for planting tart one for gnocchi and one for our green beans let's just clean this plate there we go so we're just going to ask for a close-up for the gnocchi um, so that they can see what's going on No keys, they're boiling. And as I said, guys, they don't take long to cook. Our dumplings are almost ready. I'm going to let these cook for seven minutes because we use the raw sweet potatoes. So we're just going to let them continue to cook. In the meantime, I'm going to set up my colander so I can drain them out. And then I'm going to go and get some pesto. I'll soon come back, guys. Planting tarts are going to come out the oven. is looking like let me just pull the stove out the way look at this guys feast your eyes on this beautiful beautiful planting tart look at that they're brown and crusty on the outside the sugar adds that nice glaze Okay, some of the sugar is caramelized and some is still as it is and that's going to give it a nice malt feel and that's exactly what we're looking for. So at this time, I'm going to put my fish in the oven. I'm going to put my party in the oven and I'm going to put it on 15 minutes. 
I'm going to cook it at a high temperature at 450 because we want it to be nice and crisp. Halfway through the cooking time for fish, we're going to add some stuff on it. So Jenny let me. Pepper. I think we did that at UK. Yes, Janet, definitely we. I showed you guys how to make plantain tart. Oh, the no key. Okay, so plantain tart is out. Let me just, I'm gonna let it cool down so that you guys can see what the inside looks like. So a little bit of hot even for me. So now it's time for us to take our dumplings out. See, they start floating. Come on guys, show the... Once they start to float, it's a good indication that it's time for them to come off. See, they all float up to the top. So these are ready. I'm just going to strain these. Look at that. Look at that, guys. So... And I'm going to put back the same pot onto the stove and we're going to finish them in the very same pot. Just dry the pot out. Just like this. Put some olive oil. And we're going to put some butter as well. Olive oil and butter goes in. And we're just going to give our dumplings a little saute. Just like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you could smell the flavor of the herbs. They smell amazing so I'm going to put some of the same obedient seasoning from the fish in here about a teaspoon I have some pesto some frozen pesto I'm just gonna add it in and the dumplings are gonna go back into the party and everything is just gonna get mixed together. Close up as you. And voila. Dumplings are ready. How fast was that? Pretty fast. As I said, you could put some cheese on, but we're not using any cheese on ours tonight. Uh, let me just show you guys what I'm going to be doing. So into my little container here. Are we ready? Look at that, guys. These are our dumplings. Aren't those just so pretty? Dumpling is ready. Put it right here to take a look at that. Now we are going to cook up some vegetables. I'm just going to cook some green beans. Same thing, we're just going to put some oil in here. This is olive oil, by the way. Olive oil with peppers and stuff. And I have some green beans these beans were blanched thank you boy food is so don't get it so sorry for the love name So we're adding 
adding just a little bit of butter to our beans. So these beans, I boil them in some salty water. I'm going to put the same seasoning on them. So they were boiled already, so now all we're doing is warming it through. I'm going to give it a taste. They're nice and crisp and delicious. And these are ready These are absolutely ready, so they're gonna go onto this. Green beans are like $250 per pound and this is half of a pound so I bought one pound and I'm only using half pound to make dinner for four. So guys remember I told you I want to make one of the fish so you can see it. So it's that time. Let me just clean the pot. This is a non-stick pot. Just gonna add a little bit of the oil in it. Then we're gonna put the fish down. Lisa, I have to just say to you, you're inspiring to try and get over Oh, thank you, Lisa. Shout out to I'm talking to the dog. Oh, the dog fish. Oh yes, Janet, we did make um, potato noti. Yes, we absolutely did. So guys, dinner is going to be ready shortly. Fish is in the oven. And we have one here on the stove for you guys to see. The snap was swirling up a bit. I think it's a little bit cold. Okay, so the fish that is in the oven, I need to add some stuff to it. So this is what I'm gonna do. While this one is cooking, I am going to slice some lemon to add to the fish that's in the oven. So what do you call Jamaican lemon? We call it ugly. What do you call it? Some people call it bugger lime, ugly. Right, do you call it that? I don't really like a lot of raw lemon on my fish, so no more than three slices. So we're gonna take the one that is in the oven out for you guys to see. But before we do that, let's see what's going on with this one. Give me a close up guys, I wanna flip this one over. I am smoking out everybody tonight. Everybody's coughing. Oh God, the snuffle is tough. You see how it twirl up? And this is a baby snuffle. Why is it so tough? Okay, anyhow, let's take the one out of the oven. So this is our pargy that we put in the oven and it's almost ready. So we're just gonna put 
slices of tomato and onion and stuff on it just to make sure you know it looks extra pretty and we're gonna put it back in so that it can continue to cook but before we do that we need to season all of what we just added just to make sure it tastes good put some of our relish on top and we're going to put it back in the oven for five more minutes and the fish is going to be ready so next time you see the fish Okay, so last, 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 last thing that I'm going to be making, I am going to make a little sauce, okay? I'm going to be making a coconut sauce for us to have with our gnocchi. We need some sauce, so I'm going to make a coconut sauce. It's so in the pot. And so guys, I want you to hold the camera for this sauce. Hold the, uh, I'll start to finish. So I'm making a coconut sauce. And for my coconut sauce, what I'll be doing. Not in the pot. Okay, make it just a little bit higher so you can see in the pot. So for coconut sauce, I'm cooking some onions. Just sauteing some onions. And we're adding some of the same obedient seasoning. Maybe some more. We want it to be nice and seasoned. And in here I have a can of coconut cream. I'm just going to add half of it. And we are going to let this cook. So this is our coconut sauce with the same seasoning that went on to the fish. We're gonna let it cook. While we wait on that to cook, guys, remember I promise you, this is what the planting tart looks like. Look at that. Look at that. It is so beautiful. All right, so planting tart. Stay right there. And now I'm making coconut sauce. So this is a canned coconut milk. All I did was to saute some onions and some of the same obedient seasoning blend. And I'm just gonna let this reduce down for about 10 minutes. And this is gonna be our sauce that we're gonna be having with our dinner tonight. So all I need to do now is to season it with some salt to taste. And then, I feel like dinner, dinner is going to be ready. Let me grab me a strainer. I just want to taste this to 
make sure it has the flavor. Oh yeah. So they would have used cream sauce, but I'm using coconut instead, just to tie in that island vibe that I'm looking for. It smells like coconut too, guys. Absolutely delicious smelling. Time for us to take out our fish. Fish is ready. Good night. Who was that? Good night, Mr. Bina. Okay, so our fish dinner is so ready. Fish is ready. Look at that. a little relish that we're going to put on the side so anybody that wants it this is made with capers hot pepper and bell pepper so this is the spicy this is what we're going to be having with our fish coconut sauce is ready guys tastes so good going to pour my coconut sauce over my dumplings. Add some moisture to my dumplings. Okay. Just like that. And dinner is sir so let's move away all the stuff oh sorry to hear those internet providers sometimes okay so it's time to serve our fish. I want to take it off the tray, put it on our platter, and enjoy our dinner. So I want to, I'm going to use a spatula. I think I'm just gonna slide it off because I don't want it to break off. A moment, guys. I understand, I understand, I understand. Okay. This is our butterfly roasted fish. This is what it looks like. I'm just gonna put a little bit of my condiment here and a little bit down here just to make sure that everything that ties in really really well so that's our roasted fish our sweet potato dumplings 
And of course, for our vegetables, just some sauteed green beans. This is dinner. Thank you so much, guys. So much, so much, so much. I want to taste this plantain tart because this is what I've been craving for from yesterday. Oh, mm, mm. Ripe plantain. Buttery sugar dough. This is absolutely delicious. Try making some plantain tart. It's not that difficult. Hey, Auntie. It's not that difficult, guys. Try making some plantain tart. This is dinner for us. We are going to enjoy our dinner. Thank you so much, guys, for stopping in. And for those of you who stayed in, who stayed with us, thank you so much for staying in also. This has been dinner from around the world with me, Chef Walker Barrett. Thank you for stopping in. Yeah, if you are new, hey auntie, if you're new to our live, welcome. And we ask you to go over and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching the live at Street Food Saturdays on Instagram, you can click the link into our bio that will take you directly to our youtube channel go over there and subscribe for those who didn't get to see the full live we will be editing it and posting it on our youtube channel so you guys take care take one last look sure, sure of the it. delicious meals so from my right we have some sauteed green beans so guys take a look sauteed green beans sweet potato dumplings and we finish this with a coconut sauce and some callaloo pesto uh up here we have our protein this is a local caught fish it's called a pargi and um we just flavor it very simply with olive oil garlic herbs and we roast it we put some butter on it and then for our dessert we have the beautiful plantain tart Plantain tart is a Jamaican thing. It's a Jamaican pastry. Try it guys. It's absolutely delicious. You can find a full tutorial on how to make plantain tart on my YouTube channel at Next in Food. Cheers to everybody who stayed in, everybody who looked in. I'll see you guys next week, God's willing. Take care. Sharon, Sherry, for it. Man, that should be my dinner, chef. I know.